In today's Trading Nation, we're going to help you make sense of the big move in the aforementioned bond market. Max Wolf is with 55 Capital and Boris Schlossberg is with BK Asset Management. Boris, you, you just heard Dom's report and our retort, sort of, you know, in agreement, sort of be careful. Uh, do you think it's going to be that simple? I mean, you know, the bond market sells off and everything interest rate related is doomed. Uh, no, it's not doomed forever, but I do think that this could be very much the death knell of the bull bond market. We broke above 2% with, with a vengeance right now in a 10-year. And I think uh, the one thing that's sort of universally clear is that rates are definitely going to be headed up. The key question going forward, though, is whether the Trump economy is going to be like the Reagan economy, where we have growth, which means equities and bonds, um, equities will, will, will perform well and yields will go up, or we have a Carter economy where we have stagflation, we have high yields, but not enough growth. And that could be very, very negative for equities. So that's an unknown question right now. We'll have to see how the policy shapes up. All right, Max Wolf, you got a view on the bond market. Can it back up any further? What's the interest rate risk here? Is the market overreacting, underreacting? Yeah, so we see the market as overreacting in the short term and underreacting to the existence of a long term. So I think we had sort of two risk horizons. That's the way we saw it at 55. And we do try to stay on top of these things. We don't really know anyone who understood exactly how the election was going to go and who would win it. So we see that cautionary tale as a vindication of being broad and being humble about what you don't know. There were two risks. One was the election itself, usually not a risk, but for a host of reasons this time seen as risky because we thought there could be fallout and tumult. And then there's the actual bigger risk of the four years of a new president who we don't know. We got the president we know less. And we've spent five days being excited about imagining every way it could go really well, having imagined every way it could go badly during an unusual nine day slump in risk assets. All of that just tells us that we're trying to find our feet. Because we don't know where our feet are, I think the other thing that's happened here is we saw basically short covering and we saw, I think, the beginning of something much more interesting that no one wants to talk about, which is U.S. sovereign credit is beginning to lose its position since World War II as the no-risk asset. Money started leaving for that reason. It started a trend or a momentum and people followed into it and plugged it back into the world they knew before. Here's what we know for sure. We now live in a riskier world. Our MRI, our risk scan that's proprietary at 55, as well as 20 or 30 other metrics tell us the world looks riskier. Certainty is down and we're trading like we know what's going to happen and it's good. My guess is we'll be one for two if we're lucky, oh for two if we're not. A good time to tap the brakes, be diversified and make sure you have a long term strategy, not a short term relief. Yeah, All right. And Brian, Max, to add Boris, final comment quickly, please. I was going to say, just to add to that, yes, Max is absolutely right. The sovereign uh, safety haven risk is pretty serious. And the more we go towards more inward, less trade, less, more barriers, the less U.S. dollar is going to be a sovereign haven. All right, Max and Boris, guys, appreciate it. Thank you very much. For more Trading Nation, head to our website, tradingnation.cnbc.com. A strong dollar is often viewed as a net negative to the economy, but that's not always true. While export-driven companies will often struggle under a strong dollar because their products are less competitively priced abroad, consumers will benefit because imported products will be cheaper. And because the U.S. imports more than it exports, from an economic perspective, a strong dollar is an overall positive. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.